Bike day. First thing I like to do when I get a new bike is uh, cut the straps off here with my side cutters and pull the staples out so I don't scratch myself or my new bike. Let's see what we have here. Oh. Let's build it. Pull the packaging off here. Nice new pivotal post here. It's got fore and aft so you can fully customize where the seat sits. That's great, nice update. A Little bit of grease in the seat tube. So I like to start by putting the seat post in so I can mount it in my bike stand. So we've got the bike out of the box. Uh, next step is to just take off all the packaging. You got your side cutters out, cut the zip ties, and then we'll just have an inspection of the bike to make sure it's shipped safely. Inside the box is your small parts box. It'll have things like the end caps for your front hub and you know instructions and all the paperwork that come along with your new spawn. Just be careful of this brake line. Free the wheel. Gonna cut these zip ties off, just be careful of the spokes. The protective cover for our disc rotor surface. All of this here we can organize after for our recycling, cardboard, styrofoam. Woo. One thing to mention, if you've not got a fancy bike stand at your house, the fork comes with a stand that clips on and off the axle to protect the fork. If you're doing this on the ground, you can set it on there while we put the stem and handlebar together. And once we've got all the packaging off, you might need to remove a couple pieces of masking tape that are left over. Any residue can be removed with isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. The next step would be to install the handlebar with their set of metric Allen wrenches. So we'll take off and remove the face plate of the stem with our six mil Allen wrench. Once we're, it's time to install the handlebar, just make sure we've got the line clear and running free. There's no kinks in the line or it's not overly twisted. Um, it might, you might have to rearrange the bar until you figure that out. Threading these in, just pay close attention to make sure that everything's equal in spacing and tension. Uh, I like to bring it up so it's snug, so it stays in place, but that it's loose enough I can still move it to position on my, uh, on my markers here. And what we're looking for here is that we've uh, equalize with the lines and that we've centered the logo um, and that should set us up for success and with our six mil we'll just snug these up in terms of actual how tight to make these five newton meters which is about what uh, I can do without making a face it's not make a face tight paying close attention that we've got an equal gap on the top as on the bottom we're going to rotate our way around and tighten these individually. That they're all snugging up tight. Oh, make a little bit of a face. I'd also like to mention we've installed three five mil uh, headset spacers here, We're, uh, as well as a flip-flop stem. So you've got about an inch of bar height you can play with as well, uh, just by adjusting and rearranging the headset unit. Next, let's install the front wheel. So we can remove our axle stand. This is a quick release here on the fork, so flip the quick release open, and then the quick release rests into the recess in the axle, and we use that to unwind and unthread the axle. You've got your grease. Now's a good time to just put a little bit on the thread and then on the axle. That's just a nice maintenance thing for your bike. Nice feature with this, I mean, you've got the, the tabs here to put a rotor on if you did want to put a front brake on this bike. Uh, it's, very simple to do so. That goes on the non-drive side of the bike. Slide the wheel into the dropouts and insert our greased axle. Again, using the tooling to thread this axle in until it's snug. 
and then align the quick release to your position you desire and lock it close. Now we've got the handlebar in, we need to align the handlebars with the fork. I like to look down the handlebar right down to the very end of the fork. And if I can line those up so they're even, when I look off the front of the bar and I line up with the end of the fork, if that's equal, then I know things are straight and I can tighten the six mil pinch bolts on the stem here. These again, five newtons uh, of force, similar to the face plate of the stem. Alternating, bring one tight, then alternate to the next, and bring it tight. Great feature about this bike, uh, with this here is uh, available separately is a new dropout set that would have a derailleur hanger and the wheel here has a Shimano style free hub so you could put a cluster on there and a cassette and, uh, and run this as a trail bike. Inside here we're going to find our pedals, our reflectors, the owner's manual which is a sweet comic, and our bracelets. Sick. A little bit of grease on the threads. And again, the six mil Allen wrench. These are left and right specific. Uh, generally speaking, well, they'll be marked there on the axle L and R. Uh, the left hand side is a left hand thread, meaning it threads in counterclockwise. The right hand's a normal thread. Uh, threads in clockwise. Uh, we've got either a 15 mil wrench surface here or a 6 mil Allen wrench tooling on the inside of the axle. And we'll make sure these go on, make a face tight. Here's the left hand thread, so this will thread in opposite the direction you think it would. It's really important you get these on the right side or you can strip out the cranks. Uh, the next thing I would do on a bike like this is while I've got my tool in my hand, I would go around and just double check all the bolts that I can find on the bike. So for example, my stem bolts here, six mil Allen wrench, make sure that these are nice and snug. So the pinch bolts on the crank, they're assembled to the factory. Let's just make sure those are snug. Another great thing to point out is the direct mount chainring. We've got them in anywhere from a 26 tooth upwards of a 34 tooth. Uh, so you can really dial in your gear ratio for your local trails. The rear wheel, five mil on wrench. Just make sure our dropouts are snug. A nice new feature on this bike is the machine dropouts. With the channels and tapers, it's not gonna come loose on you while taking hard impacts. Brake mounts, there's four five mil bolts to check on there. Just make sure that they're snug. And rear axle nuts, either a 17 mil wrench or a uh, six mil Allen wrench. So a couple features on the bike here, now that it's built up, we have a hydraulic disc brake. Uh, these use mineral oil, so it's a non-caustic oil. That's great. Uh, however, something to be considerate of uh, with your brake set back here is that we don't get any oil or grease and we don't touch the rotor with our fingers. Even the oil on our fingers can contaminate the brake and the pads. Um, that would create a really squealy brake or a non-effective brake. When we oil our chain, which we should do, you don't want too much oil, you don't want too little, but make sure we're not using an aerosol or if we are that we're protecting the rotor surface and the pads so we're not over spraying oil onto our brake. The suspension fork. Uh, we've got Hydraulic lockout on the damper here, so you can lock it out, making it rigid uh, as well. Uh, underneath this air cap here is where we can set the air pressure or the spring, the air spring for the fork. Depending on your uh, child's weight, there's a chart on the lower leg of the fork uh, that identifies how much pressure to set. My son's 65 pounds. I'll run the lowest I can in here, about 45. 50 PSI. 
We're going to set the tire pressure. One thing to consider uh, when we're bringing the pressure up is that we want the bead of the tire to be equal all the way around the rim. And you'll see the line here. Uh, oftentimes, uh, until they're brought up to pressure, they won't have set on the, on the bead of the rim. So uh, it oftentimes means bringing the pressure up a little higher than what you'd normally ride. So probably think about 40 to 50 PSI until we see that that bead pops up. So that's 30 PSI, the riding pressure, but the bead hasn't fully made its way out onto the rim yet. So I'm gonna keep going to 40. And that seems to have done it. You really, even though the tire says 80 PSI, you really don't wanna do this or take it much up past uh, 50. And you shouldn't need to either. So we brought it to pressure, the bead set. I'm gonna let some air out. And then and then bring it back to rotting pressure, back to 30 PSI. That's got it. Okay, now we'll do the same for the back tire. Okay, bike's ready to go. We're gonna take it out of the stand here and then adjust the seat position and we're ready to ride. The great thing about this, once we've backed it off, we can move the seat fore and aft, which is a unique feature, and as well as our angle. So find the position you like, and give it a nice snug here. Right on. Ready to shred.